Hello, Phil Croshaw again here from Passions. And in this episode, I'm so pleased to be able to welcome Bill Dima to the show. Now, Bill's not a name you might know straight away, but trust me, you will have probably seen his work. And Bill is a choreographer and a director in TV and theatre. And his passion just exudes out of him some wonderful stories, some wonderful insight. Enjoy. Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Passions. And today I'm so pleased to be joined by Bill Deemer. Uh, now, it might not be a name that you know, but trust me, this guy has achieved some amazing things. Just, just trust me on that. And Bill's going to talk to us today, yes, surprisingly, about his passion and what he does and how he's got here. And maybe provide you some, with some insight, some information, maybe even some inspiration. So a very, very warm welcome to Passions, Bill. Tell us who you are and what your passion is. Thanks very much, Phil. Well, my name's Bill Deemer, and I'm a professional choreographer and director in theatre and in television, uh, which I've been doing for over 30 years. Um, so that's my passion. That's what I do. Uh, I create dances. I create um, musical sequences for theatre and for TV and for film. Um, and it is a joy. I love it as much today as I did when I first started. There you go. That's Fantastic. Uh, okay, I, I, obviously we're recording this in April 2021. Um, we've just been through and are still kind of going through what we, all of us pretty much don't talk about anything else these days. Uh, we're obviously going through the pandemic. Um, How has it been for you? Because obviously theatre has been hammered. Um, television to a point maybe. How has it been for you in terms of your impact on you? I think it's been an extraordinary and still is experience for, for everyone. Uh, for me personally, uh, the 14th of March 2020, when it all really kicked in, I lost six shows, six productions in one day. Whoa. My whole year's income and work went gone. So... Uh, you can either sit and mope or you do as the song says, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off and you start all over again. And I'm very fortunate because as a choreographer and as a director, I've also worked quite a lot in television. So um, things like Strictly Come Dancing, which which did the most amazing series last year and hopefully will again this year. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have a big routine two routines on on that series so i had something to work towards i had something to create i felt for so many people who were just stuck at home and couldn't do anything you know and you know i've been there you know um i live on my own and but i was lucky i had things to work towards just to keep the mind going but it was scary because i think a lot of people thought that covid me included I thought, oh, well, give it a couple of months, we'll all be back. And I'm afraid it didn't work out that way. Um, so, yeah, I I lost a lot. Um, I was, you know, I mean, the main production I lost was Hello, Dolly, which was due to open in the West End last year with Imelda Staunton. And I'd worked on the show. It was all, all the auditions were done. It was cast. We were ready to go. Um and I had the final design meeting and the following day, obviously, the show was cancelled, which broke my heart because uh, it's going to happen again in 2023 um, and we're ready to go. But I mean, a lot of hearts were broken over a lot of productions. It's been tough. You know, I think I think that word unprecedented is used a lot, but I think it's absolutely true. I mean, the very idea, it was science fiction stuff, wasn't it? You know, Absolutely. the speed in which it happened. Um, and interestingly, um, I'd started doing um, 
I don't know if you've heard of the term vlogs where you do like a video diary of what's going on. And uh, I started doing a video diary of uh, the situation. Of, I think it was about the 17th, 18th of March, something like that. And when I did the first one, I said on it, Ben and this is March, uh, I said on it, cool, this is, this is quite serious stuff. Um, I'm sure we'll be out and about again by September latest. I can't even start to imagine what it'll be like if we're not done by then. So it, sh it shows you how what we were thinking. Yeah, absolutely. And I just felt for so many people, um, especially in theatre, uh, because producers didn't know what to do, whether to push ahead, whether to cancel, whether to, you know, furlough people, whether to, you know, to, to, to cut people from their production companies and what have you. Um, I really felt for them, you know, um, and they're, they're, they're gradually now coming back and they're working because they do that's what producers do um and uh i've been speaking to a few this week you know that are very hopeful you know to bring productions back uh, as soon as possible uh but it's still precarious i think well it is because nobody knows quite exactly well there's two things isn't it the, the psychology of people will they go rushing back into those environments where you've got a lot of people in a relatively small space Will it be caught? Even if you've had the jab, you might be a bit cautious about it. Um, and then, of course, there's then the, the variance issue, which everybody's kind of saying, well, it's, yeah, it's looking all right, but there's this variant. And yeah, absolutely unbelievable. Well, I think now, for me, the, the, the situation we're in now is harder than anything we've had before, because before we knew you're locked in. You can't do this. You can't do that. We can't go. We've got to do this. We can do this in TV. We can do this in film. Now we're in a bit of a limbo land situation. <laughs> Are we going to go? Are we not? Are we going to, you know, um, and I don't know. And no one knows. And it's really precarious. And if you think of producers putting thousands, indeed millions into shows, you know, I feel for these guys, you know, because in the end, they've got to come up with a production that audiences are going to go to. It's all very well saying, oh, well, you could do this, you could do that. In the end, the bottom line is you need an audience and you need a theatre. Otherwise, it ain't going to work. So we have to get a bit real with all of that. And at the moment, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know whether they're going to come back. Please, please, God, they do come back and we can just go slightly smaller audiences and then up to full capacity. That's... Yeah. That's the ideal scenario, but who yeah. knows? Who knows? Yeah, very, very difficult to read. Um, I know we could talk about that for for a long time, and based on the but so. But I'm going to get back to the to the key uh, point of the show, and I'm really very interested in in your story. So you're obviously doing some amazing things in television, and it must be a wonderful uh, career that you've made out of it. Tell me how it all started, then, Bill. How did you did you come with your tap tap shoes, come out of the womb, or yeah. How did it all happen? Um, North London boy, born in Tottenham, North London. Yeah. Middle class family. You know, dad was a hard worker. Mum was a great housewife. And my two sisters went to dance school. You know, my dad was a great pianist. Um, my mum was a great dancer, nothing professional. And my two sisters went to dance school. And one day I went with my mum to pick them up from dance school. And I watched... And I said, I'd like to have a go at that. And that's how it started. And I did. And it just took off. Um, and I went to, eventually I went to a, uh, a local dance school uh, in Enfield. And um, I worked my way up. Uh, I had a natural ability for tap. Don't ask me why. It just, I can just, I just feel it. I feel the rhythms and what have you. And then I went to, I went to school. Uh, I went to a secondary modern, my secondary modern school. And I was in my third year and the English, head of English said, we're going to do a play. Uh, and we're going to do The Miser by Moliere. And we'd like you to play the son, Cleant. And I said, oh, I think that'll be really lovely. Yeah, I'd like to have a go at that. And mum made the costume. It was all of that. <laughs> and I got on the stage and I just knew. I, I, it was, it, it just happened, which sounds really cheesy, but it did. And then I did my O-levels and my A-levels and I went to a preparatory 
uh, drama course at Hartford Regional College, where I, I, I did a, a, started my teacher's degree. And then I auditioned for drama schools. And I ended up going to Guildford. And while I was at Guildford, I did some choreography and some direction. And then I went out into the business, worked, worked on and on and on and on. And then I, I, I was lucky. And the word was lucky. My God, was I lucky. I went, I did a show uh, in the West End uh, in my really early days, Cabaret, for Gillian Lynn, the master, Gillian Lynn, Dame Gillian Lynn. And what, it was while I was rehearsing that, uh, I, I was having a coffee and lunch with Gillian. And she said to me, you do know that you're a choreographer. You're going to be a choreographer and a director. And that's when it really started. And she sowed the seeds. And then I went into repertory theatre and did the odd repertory company choreographing. And I never looked back. That was how it all started. But it was Gillian. She planted the seed. Um, Is that fairly typical then in terms of the whole dancing arena? Is it typical to um, automatically be drawn into one particular type of dance that you are just particularly good at like ballet or tap or no no it was just I mean I was just in the right place at the right time and I, I just had this I, I love dance the dance is my passion but any style of dance you know anything from Edwardian from ballet anything right the way through it all it all just fascinates me I absolutely adore it and you see how fashion has influenced dance you see how various choreographers and creators along the way of you know of actually influenced dance and because of my training i was i was trained never you know to make your own mind up do your own thing but be influenced by the people who knew what they were doing and there you go and that's how it happened um the, the I mean, I'm known for my period work in Fred Astaire and Hollywood and all of that. Well, that only happened due to me doing a Fred Astaire tribute at London Palladium, you know, with all the greats. That was in 2006, I believe. Don't quote me on the dates because uh, they all roll into one. And I was really early days, you know, um, and I was asked to direct and choreograph uh, this tribute to Fred Astaire for Arvra Astaire, Fred's daughter. And, you know, I mean, we had guests. The guests were Sid Charisse, Jane Powell, uh, Anne Miller, Robert Wagner. You know, no pressure then, you know. And, <laughs> and yeah. uh, meeting them, uh, they're the reason we're talking now because they're the people that, you know, Anne Miller, Citri, they were they were trailblazers with Gene Kelly and Fred Astaire, Bob Fosse. All, all of that is where it all comes from and the way it's developed to where we are now and it will continue to develop. So, yeah, that was how that all that was that all started. And um you know, how, how did you um how did, when you look back, do you know? Are you were you aware at the time, or are you aware now of what uh, Gillian spotted in you that made come uh, allowed her to come to that conclusion that you were going to be a choreographer and a director? It was almost as if she spotted it straight away. What do you think it was that she spotted when she was choreographing? I can see it now. When she was choreographing, <laughs> I'd be I'm like a rabid dog if I'm being choreographed, and I was I was young. And I'm, yeah, let's let's do it. And as she's doing it, I'm doing it with her. <laughs> and she could see I'm one step ahead of the game the whole time. And a couple of times she said to me, before we actually, she actually said what she thought, she went, so, so Billy, you'll go down there. What, what, what will you do as you go down there? And I'd do something. And she was testing me out to see where, what, where, what, whether I was on the wavelength and where I wanted to go with a piece and what have you, you know? And that was... So I can see, I can see it now where she saw it, you know, but I've always had, I've always had an eye. I've always had the need to say something. If you're going to do something or say, the, the, need, the need to say something. And that's indeed the first thing she said to me. I said, well, when you choreograph, she said, well, what do you want to say? Well, 
I want to say that this is the story. And if this is the song, this is going to extend into that. And that's the way it all started. You know, it, it was, I was lucky. And luck does have something to do with it along the way. It's not all luck, I can assure you. There's a little bit of hard work that goes with that uh, and, uh, and self-belief and, you know, and, and just the drive you have to have. And then if you're going to do it, you've got to love it. You've got to love it. And it may sound cheesy, but even now, I adore it. I love what I do. I'm very lucky. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, I, I asked you before we came on air about, because you mentioned about luck, and I've done a lot of interviews over the years, including now up to nearly 50 Fat Passions interviews, and this word just keeps coming up. Uh, but I know that when I delve into these things, people made decisions, they made sacrifices, they read the books, they watched the videos, they turned up, they, they, they coped with the rejection is the other one, of course. Yeah. Um, do you think that um, um, in terms of the skills you talked about there, do, do a lot, what sort of percentage of people who say in dance then become choreogra choreographers or directors? Is it like footballers become football managers? Is there a similar process there? Or no, it, what do you think? Uh, dancers dance and choreographers choreograph. Uh, occasionally, you get the dancer, that w the, the, the good dancer that will go into choreography. Uh, I danced and I danced with some great choreographers, but it was always in me that I wanted to do my, I wanted to take it somewhere else. And that's just me personally. I always wanted to take what I did somewhere else and say something. Um, but th there isn't a percentage, it's rare, you know, uh, there are some great up and coming choreographers. Yeah, um, and they don't, they're not necessarily the greatest dancers. They have a technique and indeed, you know, a great facility to dance, but that doesn't make them the best dancer, but it makes them a damn good choreographer. It's a mixture, you know, you can't really put your finger on it. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting topic because um, in my in my arena, I'm a, a business consultant by by trade, and uh, particularly in sales, um, it's very typical for salespeople to be promoted into sales management, and usually it ends up a disaster because <laughs> the skills needed, you know, it, it's a different thing. And just because you're good at the technical element doesn't mean that you're going to be great at the management. And we do also see it in football, don't we, where people that go into the into the management side with brilliant footballers, but maybe they don't quite are able to. Um, how important was how important was communication skills? Is communication skills then in what you do to get, you know, not just get across what you're asking them to do, but get them to buy into you and get them to, I suppose, influence them to want to do it for you? It's vital. It's vital. And I learned. Yeah. I learned very early on, but I think I learned it from my upbringing as well, that you're not going to get anything out of anyone, you know, if someone is just cracking the whip and being uh, overbearing. And I've well, I've worked, I've worked uh, in my early days with choreographers who scared me. And I don't think you get the best out of people by scaring them. You get the best out of people by actually showing them with passion what you want and how much you want them to do it, which is why auditions are very important. It's a very, 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 I think it's the hardest part of any production. It's actually casting and getting people that are on your wavelength who are gonna join you on this journey. And you'll know then, you know, and I, I don't say it now, but I used to say, we are a team and we are one. I'll say that, but if you ever take advantage of that, I'll play the upper card. You don't have to say that. Though. I did earlier on when I was insecure and all of that, you know, you know, because you, people can try and walk over you. You know, it's a tough game. If you go into a rehe your first rehearsal and you don't know what you're doing, yeah, and you've got a company of 30, yeah, they will destroy you. You've got to know what you're doing, you know, and have that passion and they join you. There's nothing like it. There is nothing like it. Yeah, I'm getting goose flesh talking about it, actually. It, that, it's not only the opening night, it's that first day when it all starts to come to, and then you start the job and you start the work and the process. It's such a wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to do. It really is. Do you, do you think it's, um, 
you think it's natural within you? Do you think it's part of your DNA, if you like? I'm sure you've you've honed your skills and you've developed your skills and practiced your skills. But I, I often think it's the same. In, if you look at business management in a similar kind of context, it's it's still about getting people to want to be on your team. It's still about getting people to do what you want them to do, but but in an energetic, dynamic, enthusiastic way. Is do, is getting people to do that for you something that's in your DNA, or can you really just learn it from scratch? No, it's something you can do or you can't. It really is. Mm. I, you know, um, I also when you choreograph because all dancers have had a full training. You know, well, you like to think so, maybe not, but they can maybe cut what you do at an audition, um, and a, a, a dancer or a musical theatre performer, they, they so want to please. They so want to do, be good for you. And I'm the kind of person that I get it's up so tight because I want them to be good. I'm not, I've already got the job. I don't have to stand there and I'll sit there and be grand, you know, as you dance for me, come forth. <laughs> like, baloney, uh, believe you me, I've seen it. Um, but, <laughs> You know, you you want them to be good, so you're giving them that energy. And some some dancers are their own worst enemy because they try too hard, and then they blow it out the water, and it becomes imposed. The style becomes imposed, and the the way I work is, uh, and I've said this so many times. Yeah, you don't comment on a style; you actually you are that style when you dance. That has to be. First and foremost, if it's a pliqued on, a style is a pliqued on to something, well, it just doesn't happen, not on my watch. You know, it's got and, and, uh, real. Yeah, I, I get you. Authentic is it's, yeah. it's such a key word nowadays in a lot of in a lot of fields, isn't it? Yeah. Um, is, is dance, does dance have trends? But you talked a minute ago about fashion. Are, does dance have the same kind of trends, fashion trends, where particular dances are, are popular, where people want to want to do them and see? And, and I guess that might is that influenced by shows like Strictly, for example. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, we're notorious in this country for pigeonholing people and pigeonholing things. You know, all styles are relevant at all times. You know, it, oh, it's going to be this, this. Oh, this is very in at the moment, which I suppose is fine. It's fine. I, I you know, I, I, I take, I listen to it and I enjoy it and I go along and I go with the flow. But all styles are relevant at all times. There's always going to be something pulled out the bag you know and that, that's that's been slightly before you know they're not old-fashioned they're classics you know um, and, and, do, and do you think Strictly's been a good thing has, has Strictly taken you know the general awareness and the enthusiasm and get, dare I say it, the passion for dance to another level do you think hand on heart yes mm. they are um I can't speak highly enough for, for them because they are, uh, and it does sound cheesy, but it's true, they are a family. Um, they, re they reinvent every year. Every series is reinvented. Uh, um, last year's will be completely different to this year's. And, you know, please God, you know, it all comes together and I'm on board this year. No one ever knows until the last, <laughs> until you've had the meetings because they don't know where they're taking the show. They don't know what they're going to do. And it's all created and fresh every year. And that's why it's so good. And they do. They honour all styles. You know, I mean, I've done so many of the musical theatre group numbers on there. And every year it's a challenge. But make no bones about it. The, the, the producers, the technical side, uh, the pro dancers, they give their heart and soul to making it what it should be. And that's why I'm proud to be a part of it. I really am. They, they, I can't praise them highly enough. They work. They have a dancer's ethic that all young dancers should actually adopt. Yeah, they just work. They go for it. They never stop. You know, so I'm very proud of, very proud of it. I think what it reminds me from, from a personal point of view, it reminds me of the team of people, the depth and breadth of the team of people that are involved to make that thing work. 
mm. you know, meeting you today, I would have never thought, if I'd be guilty as charged, I'd have never thought, oh, the choreographers are brilliant in this. I, you know, it's just that it, you just experience it for what it is. Yeah. So, you know, the, the amount of work, because this is what I was saying about luck, you know, the, the is it fair to say that your work ethic has been key to your to your success overall absolutely absolutely i mean i do it, on on some of these uh you know these uh virtual shows and uh and, and uh, shows on tv and stuff where they say oh and they've worked so hard oh they've worked so hard well yeah that's absolutely part of the job. I, you know, it, it makes me laugh, you know, it, because it is, that is 50% of the job, you know. Work hard, people, the, the ethic of people in our business, in my business, are second to none. You know, they give their heart and soul and they work 500% all the time, hard. They work hard. Any dancer has to be in the studio, you know. This morning, I've cycled 12K in my gym and I've done a workout because you have to keep going. Yeah. As soon as you get on the back foot, forget it. It ain't going to happen. You know. So the physical as well as the mental and. Absolutely. You've yeah. got to keep going. Yeah. You can't sit on your backside all the time. You know, you've got to get out there. Even, in, even with COVID, go for a walk, do something. You know, you can't just sit and mope, you know, uh, and you've got to find your way ahead. Again, it's that thing. What do you want to say? What do what, what I want to say, you know? On that, society is changing very, very quickly on so many different levels. And we could do another show just on that, I know. Um, but one of the areas in which it seems to be changing is that almost like what I would call younger people's need or expectation for instant success, mm -hmm. instant gratification. You know, Amazon's delivered in two seconds. If it's an hour late, you're kicking off. You know, <laughs> the kind of thing I mean. Um, have you noticed at all any change in younger people in terms of their expectations of what they're going to have to put into in order to achieve the top? Are, are they aware still? Of the of the amount of work and effort and energy that they're going to have to put and sacrifices they're going to have to make in order to get where they want to go, or is there any sign of that in the younger people that they maybe are shall we say slightly less aware of that? Yeah, I think they are slightly less aware of it um, because mm. of the way it's portrayed on TV. You know, you can do a couple of hours and you can be a star. Well, it don't work like that. Um, uh, <laughs> I think also social media, it's very easy to get 10,000 followers in one go, you know, um, but to get 10,000 people into, into, into a theatre to watch you after six weeks rehearsal, that's more, I think that's more where, we, where you should be looking, you know, I'm not knocking either, please don't get me wrong, you know, social media can be a brilliant thing, um, but yeah, people, it, it is slightly forgotten, not in musical theatre and drama schools, where people are auditioning for, but it's hard, hard work. You know, you are up at half past seven every morning to get in for an eight o'clock warm up. You got to get in there and do, you know all of that. Um, but in the end, all of those things uh, they pay dividends. They really do. All of that. When I started, you got in there. You did it. You did the work. Yeah. But that's why I can now I get up and I start, and I do what I do because it's it's actually part of me, you know it's part of what I do, and that's what you do you make it part you are a product you're selling, you know, and uh, so it's important to keep yourself fit and on the front foot all the time. Yeah, you can complain all you like, but it's fine. There's another twelve thousand around the corner who can do the job as well. You know, uh, and do you find? Um... Do you find there's innovation still in dance? I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of, obviously, the steps must have been invented, invented. You can see how I know about uh, invented or, or come up with the, new, the steps, which are relatively uh, well-known steps. But how much does innovation and creativity come into the production process? Oh, 100%. You know, it does make me laugh. When I, when I choreograph Top Hat, um, uh, I paid homage to uh, Fred Astaire and Hermes Pan, who choreographed the film. Um, and 
um, bearing in mind the film has five numbers, yeah, the show has, I think it's 18, um, uh, because it was made for stage, what, what I did with it. And you pay homage to it. And there's a saying that is red rag to a ball to me. You can say to a dancer, give me this line. And they go, oh, it's one of those. And I go, one of what? What are you talking about? You know, and they think it's what they've seen and it's not, it's totally different, you know, because actually I've taken that style and made my own, my own way through that to say what I want to say. You know, there's a lot more to it than people think there really is, you know, when, yeah. when doing Top Hat, I had the original film scores to start, you know, we've moved on, shut them up and let's start again. And that's what we yeah. did. Yeah, brilliant. Actually, um, and and I normally don't mention things that are going on that might have a might have a, a relative shelf life, is it? I like everything I do to be evergreen, really. But I'm going to ask you the question because it's just just read about it this morning. Yeah. That they're, pl they're planning on, you know, they did the Mask Singer. Aren't they planning on doing something called the Mask Dancer now? Have you heard this? Yes, in fact. What do you, what do you think about that then? <laughs> well, I mean, you know. It's a clever trick if you can do it. I just, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to poo-poo it because I'm not one of those that goes, oh, no, can't do that, you know. Uh, but yeah. The Masked Dancer, uh, it's a, I'm yet to be convinced. Let's say that. <laughs> Let's say that. Um, because it's a, it's a difficult one to pull off, I would have thought. I do know some of the producers on it, actually, so who I've worked with before, and uh, they're saying they're having great fun on it anyway. So, brilliant. Yeah, so, I, I look forward to that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I, my, my wife and I, when we first saw Mass Singer, we thought, "What the hell is this crap?" And then, to be honest, we get drawn. We got drawn into it, and we got sucked in like suckers. We really did. Oh. Um, Great but fun. dancing, I'm not sure about if it has got the same uh, potential. But there you go. Who do, what do I know? Yeah, well, it's hard to mask up and dance. If you, I mean, in all the different styles that it should be. Uh, but yeah. I'm saying nothing because I don't know any more about it. So, but looking forward to seeing it big time. Okay, so um, what what advice would you give to them? There's, there's lots of young people who, in the current state of affairs, are going to have some challenges coming up to be honest, Bill, aren't they, in, in careers on every different level, um, as we all know. Um, if you were giving some advice to some young person, maybe coming out of college or drama school or university, um, in terms of both becoming a, a top dancer and or a top choreographer and, uh, and director, what sort of tips or hints might you give them? Well, I would say, first of all, educate yourself. See every kind of dance, every kind of choreography, you know, that's out there. Get on YouTube, see all the wonderful stuff. Bob Fosse, Jack Cole, Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire. All of those are the, the, like the older stuff. Uh, and then, you know, more up to date, Matthew Bourne, you know, stunning, stunning work. All of those different styles, you know. Um, so educate yourself with all those styles and get in the studio, put music on and actually find out what you want to say. What, how do you want to do that? You know, how would you go about doing that? And if you need to put it in a situation, um, OK, it's a number from Guys and Dolls. OK, they're all gangsters. OK, do you want to make that really dark and sexy? Do you want to make it comic? Whatever. But just take yourself on journeys and say something. It's not just steps. Say something with what, you know, and you will draw on that. And that's how you do it. And, you know, work with as many choreographers as you can, which is what I've done. You know, and, and I was, again, lucky working with some great choreographers. And then you see how it's done, you know, and, and, and the, the journey is tough, but worth every minute. Can you ever remember a time when you just thought, wow, I can't believe I'm making a living out of this or wow, I've made it. Or, you know, I've asked the question of a few guests actually, because, and, and I think we, I think we all have those wow moments where we might not say it out loud, but in our minds, we think, wow, you know, I can't believe. And I've had, I've had a few guests who've been, 
um, you know, rubbing shoulders with the rich and famous, as it were. And it was kind of, you know, Giles Cooper from the Royal Variety Show, you know, was saying about uh, from the Royal Variety ch uh, charity, and he was saying like, what, in one second he was with the royal family in the box, and he just suddenly thought, wow, how's this happened? Have you ever had anything like that happen? Yeah, a, a couple of times. Um, one, I, the the um, the the night we opened Top Hat in Tokyo was a big revelation to me that my work was being seen on the other side of the world. Yeah, and it translates, so it's yeah. global. That's that's a really wonderful, moving, and very humbling experience. Yeah, to think, yeah, and I then did go back and then I did choreograph the show for a Japanese cast, which was incredible and wonderful. Um, uh, so that was one. And the other one was I, I would never say that's it. I've made it because I think that's the point. Then you put your feet up. There's always something more to do. You always want to move on. Um, uh, and that's the way I am. And I will always be. Um, there was a moment when I did Follies at the National Theatre when I was in an orchestra call with Stephen Sondheim and Jonathan Tunick, the arranger, and I actually pinched myself. And I've, <laughs> I've never done it before, but I literally took the count my phone and I took the picture <laughs> because that's pretty special. That's pretty special. Two of the greatest ever orchestrator and composer and lyricist, Stephen Sondheim. And I thought, well, you're not doing you're not doing bad bill you're not doing bad bill I, all i can say is um you know in terms of the wow word um wow your your passion and your enthusiasm for what your you you do is just so 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 infectious and it just jumps out of you even even over across a screen you know not even in face to face god knows what you'd be like probably lighting up the national grid if it, if, it, if we're in a, in, a, in a room together at some point but it's wonderful to hear and wonderful to see and and, and thanks ever so much for joining me today um is there any is any dreams left if, if you had to kind of nay is there one specific one where you say where you could say yeah that i'd love to do that before i, I before i leave this mortal coil there are two coming up that I can't tell you about. You can't, you can't, you can't talk to me about it. Yeah. You, well, you could, but you'd have to kill me. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, um, yeah, there is some, and th that's something for, we're in this awful situation at the moment, but there are good times around the corner. There are some big, there's some amazing stuff going to happen, really. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm yeah. very excited, very excited. Is it fair to say then that because one of the things I've, I've, I've thought actually is that we've had we've had a bit of time on our hands in relative terms, um, which made me I said this to my wife the other day, actually. Does that mean, therefore, that there's been a creative opportunity for many people who are normally on the hamster wheel at a million miles an hour being able to stop, think, plan, think, write, draw, <laughs> record? <laughs> And therefore, it, it, I'm wondering whether there is actually a huge, not only just money, because people not going to spend it, but also a huge wealth of creative that's just waiting to get out. You're spot on. You're spot on. You know, but all those creatives, uh, not going to end on a low note, but uh, all those creatives are the people that the government have ignored. So we've all gone yeah. away and we've done our own thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm planning stuff now for 2024. You know, yeah. there's a lot of good come out of this. It's not all bad. There's a lot yeah. of creative stuff happening. You know, yeah. other people, you don't sit back. You can't, you've you got to move forward. You've got to keep creating stuff. Uh, and that's what's happened. And so there is really exciting stuff going to happen. That's for sure. Well, that's brilliant. Well, do you know what? I'm going to invite you back on in another year or so or another year or so when you're allowed to say about it. And I'll say, I saw that and now I know what you're talking about. Absolutely. And you will. You will. Definitely. Bill, thanks very much for joining me today on Passions. It's been an absolute pleasure and a delight. And uh, good luck to theatre. Good luck to music. Good luck to performing. And let's all get back to some kind of normality and have some fun again. It's long Thank overdue. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, mate. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.